Hey everybody, welcome back to www.itvideocoach.com. This is Exchange Server 2007 series, a part eight of eight video series for Exchange Server 2007. We're looking at LCR replication using mount points. Now in this part eight of eight specifically, what we're looking at is how to, after successfully mounting of the LCR copy and making sure that we've got email flow back up and running, now what we want to do is reestablish yet another LCR copy so that we're once again protected uh, just like we were originally because we want to recover using the LCR copy but then we need to take either an extra drive that we have in our server or you know maybe we've overnighted another drive from the vendor um, maybe we have a high-end server we have a hot spare that we can point to whatever the situation is after you go through the whole process of performing that LCR copy, we want to get it back up and running, but we want to get it back up and running and then create yet another LCR copy. So this part eight is going to show you how to establish an LCR copy on an up and running storage group. The very first video presentation we showed you was how to build it from scratch when we had two drives available to us uh, to actually build the original storage group and the LCR copy kind of as we went along. Uh, this one's going to show you how to create it after the fact. All right, without further ado, let's get started. Oh, make sure you go to www.itvideocoach.com for higher quality video downloads. And you can find all my exchange videos and Server 2008 stuff up on YouTube under the YouTube tag Grizzamore. That's G-R-I-Z-Z-A-M-O-R-E. Hey, welcome back everybody. This is the final part, part eight, of how to enable LCR on Exchange Server 2007. Welcome back everybody. Uh, you can find all these videos out on YouTube. Uh, you can look under my YouTube tag. It's G-R-I-Z-Z-A-M-O-R-E. That's Grizzamore. You can also find all this stuff up at www.itvideocoach.com. Uh, of course, higher quality videos are up there for download. You can download them individually. You can see the whole uh, part series all put together in one contiguous video if you like. Everything's all organized up there. Okay, so without further ado in this part eight video series, at part eight of eight, this last part, everything's been done. LCR is awesome. We love LCR, right? We've recovered. Everything's working. Now what do I do? Well, hopefully I've got yet another drive that I can stick in my server, or I have an extra set of drives on my SAN that I can point to, and I've recovered my storage group, okay, and everything's working great. So I want to go back out into disk management and make sure that I can see another drive. So I right-click on my computer, go to Manage, and what I'd like to do is once again pretend that I have another brand new drive out there that I've just placed in my server. I'm going to create a brand new volume. Simple volume. Again, these are not available because I don't have any additional drives. All right? This is a dynamic disk, by the way. And we can go ahead and mount that empty folder that we had before. So we have that folder that we created out there. That's empty. There's nothing in this folder. It's an empty folder. This is the original LCR copy. So since we removed the mount point from the original before, and I hope I don't lose people when I say this, but we were using this mount point once before, and we removed the mount point, but the folder was not removed. Okay? So the mount point was removed, but the folder was not removed. So the empty folder still lives. So when I go to re-enable LCR on the what used to be the former uh, drive, um, I can do that with the old empty folder and I can use that as a mount point. So we're going to just go ahead and continue here and seeing is believing. We'll just give the label of the mount point the same name. So the volume label is um, LCR copy. We'll perform a quick format. And we have a brand new volume with a mount point pointing back to this volume. All right, so once this is formatted, we'll have that up and live again. And we can see that from the C drive, 
that we have a brand new mount point. So this LCR copy mount point now points to this volume LCR copy. So I have another mount point that I can now use. I'm going to go back into my Exchange Management Console. And we're going to take the up and running storage group 3 that has the database 3 in it, which used to be the LCR copy, but is now the live copy. And then we're going to make an LCR copy, but back to the old drive. Hopefully, in real life, a new drive that you placed in, because that drive failed, of course. So there are two ways to use mount points to make it available. You can use your mount points from the get-go as you build your storage group. You can also take a storage group, in this case, and you can enable local continuous replication uh, with it up and running. And I can do this same procedure on my first storage group. If you're not adding additional storage groups and you're just working with the default, you can use the first storage group. Also, you cannot use um, LCR with any kind of storage group that has a public folder database that's being replicated to another server. Okay. Um, also, with LCR, one database per storage group and some other parameters there to think about. So we're just going to go here. We're going to click on that storage group and enable local continuous replication. And we'll slide that up a little bit so we can see the whole screen. And we're going to do this for storage group three. And we're going to modify the uh, system files and log files. And we're just going to point to that mount point once again. Again, in this interface, they don't show the little icon so that you can tell that it's a mount point. It just looks like a regular folder which is fine, which is on my C drive. Just remember, even though the icon's not there, it is actually a mount point, okay? And then we're gonna do the same thing for the database, and it defaults to the same folder. So we can just click Save there. So we're pointing our log files and our database to the same folder, right? And click Next, and it should give us a completion. Uh, I guess some things could take longer in a production environment. If you have a, a bigger database, of course, things might take a little bit longer to configure, uh, obviously, with a full-blown database. So there's your command shell commands. You can always copy and paste these into a text file and use these later if you need to script it out and tweak some of the pointers. You can always look these commands up, um, obviously, on your own if you need to. Okay? Okay, now when we come back in our storage group, we have a status of healthy. So that looks pretty good. So we pretty much wrap that up. That ends this eight-part series. I hope you enjoyed it on how to set up LCR from beginning to end and how to actually, at the very end in this last video, go back and totally recover uh, back to yet another drive so that we don't leave ourselves recovered without having another drive that we pointed back to. So always make sure that once you recover, as soon as possible, if you're using LCR, to set it up again to point back to that other drive. Thank you very much, and we'll see you in the next video.